Thank you for tuning in to the third installment of this uh, special uh, documentary, if you will, about there is no financial crisis. There is no financial collapse. I want to can pick up where I left off at, but I want to take a moment, first of all, for you, those of you new to this channel and just tuning in, um, you're probably wondering who, who, who is this cat uh, with doing this, this compilation of videos. Well, I worked on Wall Street and I also traded on Wall Street. I was the head trader and I also ran the trading room. I also ran the trade desk for retail accounts. I worked at more than one Wall Street firm. I worked at two. Both were named Nameless. It doesn't matter what the name of the firms were. The important thing about working on Wall Street is what do you do on the street? Not everybody who works on Wall Street is a trader. Some people are salespeople. Some people are analysts. Some people work in the back office and push paper around. Some people are accountants. Some people actually uh, are responsible for creating financial instruments. So there's all different types of roles and responsibilities. I'm a dinosaur. My group of people no longer exist on Wall Street. This was back during the heyday. Now it's all about machines, computers, algorithms, and etc. The old school stockbrokers have now become financial planners and fundraisers for people who do what I do, which is trade the markets. So when you see people making videos on YouTube talking about, oh, I worked on Wall Street and thinking that they know something, if they didn't trade on Wall Street, then they don't know what they're talking about. Not when it comes to the matters that we are discussing. We're talking about trading. We're talking about the mechanism of the markets and how that mechanism was structured and how it's been replaced. We're talking about these things. So this is above their pay grade. They, you know, that's why the, you don't hear videos like this. And you don't see videos like this is because most people don't want to come forward who did what I did, who do what I do. There's not many of us, first of all. Second of all, most of them, they're not crazy enough like me to come on camera and make a video. I have tried to interview some of my colleagues and they have refused to even be interviewed. And they say what we did and what we discussed, they want to leave it there and the past and that's it. I am still in touch with some of my old colleagues and peoples and... Um, working on Wall Street you meet many types of people and you see how things work what makes the world go round and I was privy to a lot of neat things I've met a lot of neat people uh, in my day and um, that's pretty much it I just wanted to give you that quick background that's why I can talk about what I talk about how I talk about what I talk about all right in this chart here getting back to business this is a, the chart of the US dollar we're picking up where we left off at in this chart I'm going to demonstrate that the dollar has already been replaced and that the 2008 financial crisis was the beginning of the dollar replacement system. The robo signings of mortgages is part of the new electronic system. The new regulation stating that your deposit money is the bank's money is because technically it is the government's money because the paper system has been replaced by the electronic system electronic credit system is the new dollar that is what we're going to be going over in this video so first things first the dollar has been replaced we're going to cover that but first let's start with the 2008 financial crisis which is the beginning of the replacement system okay this chart starts from August of 2007 and ends on this side at um, March the 28th of 2008 so we're gonna start here first as you can see the dollar steady decline into 2007 well into the two, uh, 2008 downtrend remember from past video bear market 
little red uh, grizzly bear in the bottom right hand corner of the chart all right we're in a bear market the dollar is steadily declining AK ie we are in a um, a, a weak dollar policy at this point okay weakening dollar makes exports uh, go a little bit more smoother okay but here we are it's 2007 now during this time you know keep in mind um, interest rates were not at zero all right they were not zero they were low per se but they weren't at zero like they are now okay this is 07 okay Real estate market was on fire. All right, let me give you some background here. Mor mortgages were being given out like candy. New banks were popping up overnight. New lenders, relaxed financial regulations. Um, anyone could get into the game. Uh, it didn't matter if you were a convicted felon. You could get a real estate license and sell real estate. You could be a loan officer and do mortgages. It was just the wild, wild west of finance. Now, during this time, I too was in the game. I had my own mortgage company. I specialized in hard money loans and commercial loans. I got the deals done that no one else could get done. I dealt everything from double wide trailers to log cabins. I did marinas. I did gas stations. I did banks. You name it, I did it all. Anything that had to do with raw land or developing raw land, anything that had to do with real estate, that was me. I was the, 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 the stop that people would go to because everyone else told them no. I even did loans for celebrities, okay? I cannot name those names in this video. I will be sued, so I will shut up. But suffice to say, I did names uh, that you all know, household names. I did deals for. I am here to tell you that some of the celebrities that you think are balling and wealthy and rich have the worst credit. It is a known fact that the wealthier a person is the worse their credit is credit is for poor people I repeat credit is for poor people rich people don't need credit because they have money alright so you need to understand that we will discuss that further in a later video because we're gonna get to why the new system was created in the first place so I don't want to get ahead of myself so getting back to business here this 2008 and 2007 situation okay contrary to popular belief and opinion the 2008 crisis is not the 2008 crisis it just so happens that things started to break down and be revealed to be a problem in 2008 but technically speaking this is really not the 2008 crisis technically speaking this is the 9-11 crisis this stems from 9-11 remember I showed you the new paradigm versus the old paradigm we ended one system and started a new one that's what we did the industrial age went away behold the new and information age okay so that was the collapsing of one and bringing up another one we did a global reset we reset everything we we, we busted all the debt and started a new situation and that's what you're seeing here now in this 2007 situation we had over 300 different lenders and banks in the United States that was helping to fuel uh, the housing bubble scenario where did these banks and stuff come from that's the question that people are not asking when when you look at your history books and listen to uh, documentaries and stuff you know on PBS and other places what's the one thing they talk about they talk about greed they talk about you know um, giving um, giving houses to people who didn't deserve them and couldn't afford them and things like that no that was not what fueled this the question you need to ask yourself is 
why would people of common sense give houses and money to people that couldn't afford it in the first place you never saw that happen before prior to this here you did not see this yeah there have been booms and busts within business cycles and sectors of course real estate's no stranger to booms and busts but we never seen this all right this is a result of the new system remember the old system had no credit scores it had no credit nothing okay it wasn't it wasn't contingent on that this new system is all about FICO scores and Equifax and Experian your tri merge credit report all that is a product of this right here all that stuff was established to help fuel and create this all of that credit stuff came into play to help fuel this this would not have been possible without Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and your FICO and your Equifax and Experian and TransUnion. All right. All those counterparts help to create this. Next thing, why would people take economic risk to create a mortgage lending bank? take extreme risk if there wasn't a ridiculous payoff reward waiting for them remember this never happened before I repeat this never happened before there was no such thing as a Nina loan no income no asset loan didn't exist there was no no not no doc loan okay they did not exist. It was unheard of. 100% financing. Never heard of. Even FHA, you had to put 3% down. This was 100% loans. Oh, but it didn't stop there. No, no, no. Some of you may be still too young to remember this. But do you know? And most people probably don't know this. But did you know, here, lean into the, to the speaker so I can whisper this one to you. I don't want to say it too loud, all right? There were 150% no-doc loans. Ooh, did he just say that? Yes, he did. I'm here to tell you, at the height of all this right here in 07, you could get 110% loans, 120% loans, and in some cases, 150% loans. I kid you not. The reason why I know is because I was involved in it. I had a mortgage company. I told you that. That's how I know. So, how does that work? Explain. Okay. Well, as you know, in some loans, you can roll in your closing costs. Okay? You can have all that paid for and rolled into the loans. Not a problem, right? Kid stuff. But these specialized loans allowed you to get a check after you bought your house. <laughs> yes instead of me cutting a check to purchase a house someone's cutting me a check to buy the house and then cutting me a check after that almost like thank you for buying the house here's a little something for your troubles <laughs> yes 110 percent loans and 150 percent loans in, in rare cases i'm telling you the what it, it it was on paper 120 and 110 and 115 percent loans i'm not kidding purchase loans they were available you could also get them in refis yeah it was it, it was the wild wild west all right um of course, there were also um, rehab loans. If I found some uh, hole in the wall, a dilapidated building, I could go in, get a loan to, you know, fix it and flip it. Okay, so flipping was was powerful back here. All this was happening while this weak dollar policy became into effect. Question: What do you think changed or caused this right here to happen? Well, they had to keep the rates in check. All right, and the only way to do that was to weaken this right here. All right, 
we'll get into a bond chart later on but I want you to see this right here all right now here's the part that's gonna blow your mind while this was happening something weird happened in 07 that didn't happen in 08 you ready for this the collapse happened in 07 it did not happen in 08 I repeat the housing collapse happened in 07 not 08 for TV purposes and for your purposes the collapse happened in 08 because you saw the stock market meltdown but that is not the official start of the housing crisis it was here in 07 I will never forget the fateful day I got that phone call telling me that the hedge funds on Wall Street were no longer buying and creating our mortgage-backed securities and so basically the gig was up we had no way to close our extensive pipelines so basically what whatever deals you had in the closing process right then for that week had to be hurried up and closed right away because that was it the gig was up we had two things fueling this housing economy okay the thing that was fueling the housing economy was the mortgage-backed security creations on Wall Street by the big old hedge funds sucking them up and Freddie and Fannie I'm here to tell you that the mortgage crisis the 2007 2008 crisis the government was implicit it was an inside job just as 9-11 was an inside job this 2007 2008 was an inside job yes I'll repeat it again the financial crisis was an inside job all right it would not have been possible let's go back without what Freddie and Fannie okay Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. That's what helped to create. You had, you had these quasi-government entities created to balance and control this here. They had to do something to prop up the economy. When the stock market isn't kicking, they boost up real estate and vice versa they gotta keep it going this was a special situation though in human history because it had never been done before this was kinda like the uh, trading houses of the 1990s 2.0 because instead of the tr prop trading firms propping up all over the place you had the mortgage companies and you had builders building all over the place question for you where did the builders get the money from to build like this hmm and second of all who would even take such enormous financial risk to take on such huge building pro projects if there was no promise of a rainbow at the end so my question to you is who promised the rainbow who had those who, who, who do you know has those kind of pockets <laughs> the federal government the Fed the Federal Reserve the Federal Reserve Bank the Fed the feds by way of using Fetty and Franny as their proxy to guarantee and back all the US mortgages in the country every US mortgage was guaranteed and backed by the federal government I kid you not that's what this right here is and was this right here was preparing the way for the last roll-up for what was about to come the robo signing was part of it that technology is part of the conglomerate of computer systems used to make all of this right here happen and then when it stopped when it was enough was enough when the defaults and stuff start coming they could no longer sustain the the system then you had this look at this this is 2008 during the financial crisis look at the strengthening of this dollar we went from weak dollar policy to strong dollar policy overnight look at that 
All right. Interesting, isn't it? That is your second reset happening as the dollar died up in here. Look at that. Look at the lows we hit. Take a look at where we ended off at with this dollar. We touched the 70 handle. 70, guys. The equivalent of 70 cents. Look at that. That is astronomical. And it stayed there from uh, March of 08 all the way down here until we start lift, lift off here of July of 08. We were in trouble. All right. This is before even the announcement. Now, something else was happening during this time, this 08 situation. And we're about to get into that in the next video.